another episode of Going Crazy with Pastor John. Woo! Ah, yeah! It's the, uh, it's the cheering. It goes on inside of my head. All right, I am so glad you guys decided to spend a few minutes hanging out with me today. I just want to say that I miss you guys so much. I've been having so much fun getting to still be a part of your lives for just a little bit, making these videos and, and seeing how you guys are enjoying them, and I'm having a great time doing them. But man, guys, I miss each and every one of you so much. I miss seeing you guys on Sundays, on Wednesday nights, and Royal Rangers and Girls Ministry. I just can't wait till we can get back all together. But I am so grateful that we still have this, and we still get to be a part of each other's lives in some way. So with that said, we're going to get to what we're talking about today and have a little bit of fun. So we've been talking this week about everything that happened after Jesus rose from the dead and overcame death and went to heaven to be with the Father, and he sent down a helper. He sent down the Holy Spirit. We're talking about all the ways that the Holy Spirit helped the disciples and the Christians of that time, and we're seeing how that can help us today and how the Holy Spirit still does the same exact things for us today. So first, we learned about how the Holy Spirit gives us power by the way that the Holy Spirit gave the disciples powers to speak other languages and do amazing things. And then we learned about how the Holy Spirit gives us directions yesterday as we were secret agents. And we learned about following directions and seeing how the Holy Spirit puts us in the perfect place and the directs us in the perfect ways to do exactly what God wants us to do. And today we're going to learn about a tough one and we're going to talk about how the Holy Spirit helps us forgive. And we're going to talk about it through a guy named Stephen. Now, the story of Stephen in the Bible, to me, is one of the coolest stories because it truly shows God's love and it challenges us to say, wow, somebody went through that and they still chose to love and forgive in a way that I don't know if I could. We've talked about forgiveness a little bit before, but I want to talk about how the Holy Spirit can help us forgive, the crazy ways that the Holy Spirit can help us forgive. So I want us to kind of take a second. I want us to think of the meanest things that have ever been done to us. The thing that may have hurt your feeling the most. The time that it was hardest for you to forgive. I want you guys to think about that for a second. And I'm going to send it over to my friends and see if they've had any tough times where they had to forgive. Ah, oh, forgiveness. What a difficult thing. Oh, gee. Oh, oh, oh. Almost lost my footing there. Oh, okay. Well... You see, I have to find forgiveness in my heart for mother every single day. Every time she chooses to leave me here abandoned, just looking out the window, waiting for her to come home. Man, what a drama queen. You know, Hoopy, Hoopy forgive all the time. Hoopy love forgiving. Cat hate Hoopy in the face. It's okay, Hoopy forgive. Hoopy cat's best friend. Hoopy everyone's friend. It's okay, I always forgive. I don't want you to forgive me. I just want you to leave me alone. The thing I struggle with the most when it comes to forgiving is probably how I'm so much better than all of you and you're not as good as me and that's tough to deal with. Yeah, Cap, believe it or not, you have to forgive us lesser beings for not being as amazing as you. As tough as that may be, you know, I, I can imagine it's a real struggle. Well, for any of us who've had some real things done to us, because let's be real, I mean, he lives in a house where he doesn't have to worry about food, water, and pretty much lives for free. Not many bad things really happen to the cat. But to us, in the real world, things can get kind of tough, right? I mean, sometimes we run into people who just aren't nice and are just mean to us for reasons that we have no idea. Sometimes people just are selfish and do things that what's best for them, even if it means hurting us. Sometimes people hurt us without even really meaning it. And sometimes, to me, one of the hardest things is when somebody hurts somebody I love. You know, there have been a lot of times in my life where somebody's been really mean to somebody that I love that means a lot to me. And when they're mean to them, it's really hard for me to forgive them. I could take someone being mean to me. But when it comes to being mean to somebody I care about, it gets a lot tougher. So whenever I struggle with forgiving, I think about this story. Because like I was saying before, this story about Stephen... It's one of the ultimate stories where you have to say, you have to sit back and go, you know what? If Stephen at the end of this can forgive, then I got to forgive who was hurting me too. So the story of Stephen starts like this. So Stephen became a follower of Christ. He fell in love with Jesus. He was told about him. He was told about the gospel and how Jesus died and, and came back to life and did everything because he loves him so much. So Stephen 
became so excited, he became full of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gave him power. And the way he gave him power is in his ability to speak to people. And there was just something about Stephen that just got made people want to listen. And all around people were listening to Stephen and people and were coming to Christ. But the thing is this. Remember the people that didn't like Jesus, the Pharisees and those those Jewish those Jewish leaders at that time? Remember how they didn't like Jesus and wanted to get rid of him? Well, they were sitting back going, geez, oh my gosh, another one of these guys. And just like they didn't like Jesus, they didn't like Stephen. And they didn't like what Stephen was teaching the people and how people were coming to believe in what Jesus did and accept the gift that Jesus gave them. The, the Pharisees wanted nothing to do and they wanted the people to have nothing to do with Jesus. They didn't believe in it and they didn't like how it was against their traditions. So they started to make up a plan against Stephen. And as Stephen was preaching and telling people about God, they were looking for reasons to have him arrested. So what they did, it was in the middle of him preaching one time, they had they just grabbed him and brought him in front uh, of, it was basically like a courtroom uh, of religious leaders, okay? And brought him in front of the courtroom. And they falsely accused him, meaning they knew that he didn't do anything wrong, but they chose to accuse him of, breaking laws and doing things wrong, even though they knew for a fact he didn't do it, just because they wanted to get rid of him. That's what falsely accusing someone means. So they falsely accused him of committing crimes and speaking against God, saying, like talking about bad about God and, and the uh, original leaders of the Old Testament, like Abraham and all of them. They said that he was speaking bad about God, which was called blasphemy, which was something that you really didn't want to do. So they accused him of committing blasphemy talking bad about god what what i'm in the middle of, i'm in the middle of telling the story all right apparently uh hooper relates with um steven here so he would like to tell you about it so here you go yes thank you father i want to say i know exactly how steven feels in this situation because i had the same thing happen to me just the other day remember when your cookie went missing and you blamed hoopy for it and you said i ate it well I ain't eat it. Indy ate it. It wasn't me. Why, that little rapscallion. I didn't eat the cookie. He ate the cookie. It was not me, father. <laughs> Foolish human. He always blames the dogs first. He underestimates me because of his my size. <laughs> That'll show him I'm the one who stole the cookie. <laughs> oh, 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 how long were you standing there? And it always comes back to the cat. You know, I think my dogs already got this whole forgiving thing down. Unless maybe they just haven't figured it out yet but if they did and they haven't found a way to get rid of this cat yet then they're pretty good at forgiving as it is but so let's keep going on with the story so like i said and hoopy and andy clearly can very much relate to steven was falsely accused of doing some pretty bad things not only did they bring him in and accuse him and say he did all these things but they found people to lie about steven they found people to to go along with the false accusations, with the lies, and to lie themselves and act as witnesses and say, you know what, I saw him myself doing these things. Actually, we have the actual footage, the tape of the people and what they said when they were falsely accusing and lying about being witnesses to Stephen's crimes. Let's check them out. Oh yeah, that guy? Yeah, that guy, Stephen? Yeah, Stephen, he ain't a good dude. I saw him, he was saying bad words about, like, Moses, and he was saying bad words about God. I mean, I swear, across my heart, hope to die, that's what I heard him say. Ah, yes, I've seen this man, Stephen. This man, Stephen, is no good. This man, Stephen, has been speaking against the Holy Temple and against the law of Moses. You know, I may be an egg and all, but I gotta say, Stephen, he ain't too good of a guy. You know, I heard him say that Jesus Nazareth, well, he was going to destroy the temple and change the customs Moses handed down to us. Now, that just ain't right. Those were some weird-looking people back then, man. I mean, one guy actually looked like an egg. That's just weird. Where was this? I don't, I don't know. But weird-looking people, and they were lying. Think about this. If you were in the audience and you were in the crowd or in the jury, let's say, and you heard those accusations, those things being said about Stephen, 
and three people said it, you'd probably believe him. But they gave Stephen a chance to defend himself. And in this moment, the Holy Spirit came over Stephen. And it said, the Bible says that his face glowed. That it was like glowing like, like an angel. And when he spoke, he reminded the people of their past and all the things that they'd done wrong. And he defended himself in a way that a lot of people were really impressed by how well Stephen spoke and how much wisdom he had. Keep in mind, guys, Stephen wasn't some old, wise guy. He was very young. So a lot of people didn't expect him to be as wise and intelligent as he was. And God gave him the perfect words to be able to defend himself. But unfortunately, the people's pride and the lies that were said about him blinded them from seeing the truth. So they decided that they wanted to get rid of Stephen. So they decided to punish him by stoning him. Stoning him meant they literally picked up rocks and they just threw him at Stephen until the, the punishment would be until he died. It's a pretty brutal and horrible way to, to be punished and, and to die. And it was very sad and I'm sure scary. So they took Stephen out and they started to hit him with the rocks. And one of the people there was named Saul. Now you guys might remember Saul. We're gonna have to remember him for tomorrow. But he was one of the main people who wanted to punish Stephen and get rid of him. Now Saul, who will later be another name we'll see tomorrow, was there and he was one of the main people, one of the leaders saying, we need to get rid of him. And they sat there and they hit him with rocks. And in that moment, as all of them were, they were punishing him for things that he didn't do and in a way that he definitely didn't deserve. Stephen did this. What? No, this is, no. No, all right, the cat has something to say. He has a guess on what Stephen did. Yeah, this is the part where uh, Stephen used the power of the Holy Spirit to uh, get his revenge and uh, give everyone wedges, correct? Yeah, unsurprisingly, you didn't get it right, okay? No, that's not what Stephen did. You see, Stephen had, was filled with God's mercy and his forgiveness and his love, and he wasn't thinking about revenge in that moment. Revenge isn't something that God wants us to feel. It's not something that leads to a, a, down a good road. Revenge ends up hurting you really more than it does the other person. You see, in that moment, all Stephen cared about, and he said to God, please forgive them. Be, don't hold this against them, what they're doing to me. He asked for their forgiveness. Because in that moment, even though they were doing what they were doing to Stephen, Stephen still found a way to forgive them. He still had forgiveness in his heart because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit inside of him gave him the ability to forgive. And in that moment, Stephen was the ultimate example of God's love and his mercy and his forgiveness. And God must have been so proud of Stephen in that moment. And even though something horrible happened to Stephen here, God was able to take him up with him and was now Stephen's with God for all of eternity. And Stephen left behind such an amazing story here. So with that said, we're going to take a look at today's memory verse. Okie dokie. Oh, ow, you hit me in the face. That's not nice. Try to read the memory verse for today. Oh, man. All right. I got to concentrate. I got I to gotta sit down. Okay, here we go. Colossi, clo, cl, cl, that word 313 says, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a, oh, man. Grim, I am going to try. Against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. That's the memory for today. See you later. As always, Zoopy, nice job. You gave it your best shot. All right, so what is that scripture saying? You see, a couple weeks ago, we learned about how God forgives, and his forgiveness is amazing. It never runs out. He'll never stop forgiving us. There's nothing that we can do bad enough that God won't forgive us for. There's nothing big enough, right? That we can break his heart like Peter broke Jesus' heart, and Jesus still forgave him the same way we can be forgiven. Well, today it kind of turns back around on us. And based on the scripture is saying, and when we take a look at it, it's saying, you know the way that God forgives you? You know the way that he never holds anything against you? Well, do that for others, even your enemies. Let's take a look at the scripture. We're going to memorize it, take a look at it one more time, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more. All right, so today's scripture is Colossians 3.13. 
Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So what's that saying? A grievance means a complaint. So if anyone has a complaint, meaning if someone's ever done anything wrong that you would need to complain about towards you, whatever it is, the scripture is saying that forgive because God forgave you. You don't have the right to hold anything against somebody. If God didn't, if God didn't hold what you did wrong against him, then you don't have a right to hold anything that someone might do wrong to you. So anytime that we're struggling with forgiving somebody, no matter what it is, now it doesn't mean we have to be that person's best friend. It doesn't mean that um, you're just gonna get walked all over and if someone's mean to you, then you never stand up for yourself. You should stand up for yourself and it's okay to say, you know what, I forgive you, but that doesn't mean I wanna be close to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to allow you to hurt me. There's a difference between the two. But when you don't forgive and you hold anger in your heart, it's kind of like a poison. And you're just holding that in your heart and slowly but surely, it's gonna hurt you more than it'll hurt the other person. You see, yes, God wants you to forgive, to show his love and be an example of his forgiveness and his mercy, yes. But he also doesn't want that unforgiveness to hurt you because he knows how damaging it, it can be. So he wants us to be an example of what it means to forgive, an example of mercy, just like Stephen, that people were doing the ultimate horrible thing to Stephen punishing him for things that he didn't even do, punishing him just because they didn't like him and they didn't like what he was saying. Even in that moment, Stephen said, you know what, God, I don't want you to hold this against them because I forgive them. Please don't hold it, what they're doing against them. Forgive them. That was Stephen's heart. So we have to all try and do our best to be like Stephen because if he can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit and we have that same Holy Spirit, that means we can do it too. That means when... When our brother or sister is being uh, kind of not being treating us right or someone at school is being a bully, trust me, I know what that feels like. It doesn't mean that you can't stand up for yourself, but God is saying to forgive them. Stand up for yourself, but do it in love. Stand up for yourself, but let yourself forgive them and don't hold that anger against them. All right, so with that said, we're going to play today's game. Let's head over. All right, guys, here's today's game for today. It's Story Charades. Here's how we're going to play. One person's going to face a TV. The rest of the people are going to face away from the TV. They're going to look away. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys the first word. The person who's facing the TV is going to pause the video, pause the video, act it out. You guys can't unpause the video until the, everyone else guesses what's on the screen. After that, you guys switch and pick a new person to do it. All right, ready? And go. Pause the video now. All right, you guys should have guessed it was finger painting. Next, go into the next one now. Pause. All right, everyone should have guessed riding a bull. Very nice. Pause. All right, everyone should have guessed scuba diving. Nice job, guys. All right, ready and pause. All right, everyone should have guessed bowling a strike. If you guys haven't switched, make sure you switch now. Pause. All right, you guys should have guessed driving a boat. That might have been a tough one. Pause. Arg, matey. You should have guessed walking the plank. Nicely done. All right, pause. You guys should have guessed. The guesser should have guessed eating an Oreo. Make sure you're switching up who's acting it out. Pause. All right, it should have been having a bad dream. Ready and pause. You guys should have guessed washing an elephant. And that's today's game for today. Let's head back over. Nice job, guys. I had so much fun hanging out with you guys today. Um, the cat actually has something he wants to say. I'm, I'm kind of impressed. Cat? Yeah, I just want to say, I guess if Steven could forgive like that, I guess I forgive you for not being as good as me. See, even the cat can just learn a, a little something. Just a little bit. All right, guys. That's about it for today. Listen. Remember, if you're memorizing those memory verses, have mom and dad make a video of you, send it to me at jon at axisny.org to my email, or send it to me on Facebook, wherever. I want to see you guys memorizing your verses and anything else that might be funny or whatever that happened while you were watching the video, send it to me. I want to put you guys on our Axis Kids Facebook page. 
So hopefully I'll see you guys soon and have a great day. See you later.